So I make videos on computer parts, and I found that by far the cheapest way to get them is by buying untested lots from sites like eBay. It's a pretty good way to get decent prices, especially on video cards, and I've gotten some pretty good stuff before. This is my most recent haul, and it went pretty well. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is what $29 worth of graphics cards look like. Apparently there are nine cards in here, so that means that if they all work, I've paid $3.22 per graphics card. Now, I don't know exactly what's in here. The description did not provide any details, but for $3.22, it doesn't really matter what graphics card you get, you're still getting a pretty decent deal. So, let's see what we got. This is better packing than stuff I bought off of Newegg, man. I'm just gonna... On the bright side, if the cards don't work, we can guarantee they were not damaged in shipping. Alright, then the first graphics card doesn't look too bad, actually. It has HDMI, so we know it's not horrible and not from the early 2000s, which is a nice change of pace. It's also made by Pegatron, who apparently exploited workers in a China manufacturing plant for Apple, so that's something to keep in mind. But not a bad start. We'll see if it works in a bit. This has got to be a GT610 or something. Oh, it's a GT520! I've actually never had any GT500 series graphic cards, so this is my first time working with it. It's not a very powerful card, but it's got one gig of DDR3, so if this card works, it might not be a bad purchase, actually. I don't know if you can see this card, but it already looks way too familiar. I hope it's not what I think it is. Next, we have a, a uh, we, we, we have a Fire GL card. What is this? I don't know what exactly this card is. This is the reading on the back. It's pretty uninformative and therefore kind of crappy branding. These were workstation cards back in the day, and I think they were discontinued, like this product lineup, but it's only a little bit dirty. There's not that much dust and doesn't look to be in horrible condition, so it might just work. Oh yeah, I, I don't know if I mentioned this. I don't know if these cards work. They're um they're all untested, so we're just kind of gambling here. We have an HD 6450 with a passive cooler and one gigabyte of DDR3. I already did a video on the 6450, except not the one gigabyte version, so this might be interesting to see how they stack up against each other. Also, this is a goofy looking heatsink. It doesn't matter how you look at it. It's just a chunk of metal on a PCB. We got a... Is this the exact card I just did a video on? Hang on a second. Stupid piece of... Uh, here it is. So this is the graphics card we just bought, and uh, this is the graphics card I just did a video on. You see the difference? They're both going to be the X300 SE Hyper Memory. Maybe they have different onboard VRAM configurations because that was a thing, but dang. I uh, I guess they're both e-ways. So let's see what we got next. This, this thing looks nasty. It's also by Pegatron. What is it with Pegatron and making shitty graphics cards? Well, we know it's a Pegatron card, and we know it, uh, the PCB was made in China, and we know that it's dirty, and it's missing a VGA screw, and, uh, I, I don't know, it might work, we're gonna find out later. Next, we have, uh, this, oh my god, we have a GT710, let's go! I never thought I'd be excited over a GT710, but they're a pretty popular card, and I've always wanted to try one out. <laughs> I gotta stop manhandling these poor cards. I don't know how much VRAM it has, but it is by EVGA. Rest in peace, EVGA. Well, not really rest in peace, but they stopped making graphics cards, and that's kind of sad. This is a... I don't know what this is. Um, it's got HDMI. It's probably gonna be a ATI card or AMD card because it has a red PCB, and I doubt NVIDIA would make a card with that. And last but not least, we have an 8490. I have, like, four of these cards. I am, I am sick of looking at that... I actually made it in the box over there. It's off camera. Time to see if these cards actually work. Bro, the card doesn't fit in the f***ing... Hang on, I got a fix for this. For my pliers. Shut the f***. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. There we go. Now it fits. Well, the Fire Geo card does not work, unfortunately. I'll try cleaning the card out later. Maybe that'll fix some stuff. But for now, it's dead on arrival. I stepped in the tape and then I tripped. Next up, we got the 520. Let's see how this one works. 520 doesn't work either. Ah, what the f- I forgot to unplug the integrated graphics, so it was using that instead of using the graphics card. And it looks like the 520 actually works. Guess we didn't get scammed. Next up, we have this unidentified red card, and it seems to be working. We'll put that one back on the table. Let's try out this 6450. It doesn't fit either. Well, you know what we do. Perfect. Now it fits in, just give it a good smack or two. Turns out the 6450 works as well, so we have one car that doesn't work and three that do. The GT710 also works, so expect to see a video on that. Looks like this blue graphics card also works. 
You see that dirty green Pegatron card? Well, it works, so it's got that going for it. And as it turns out, our second X300 SC also works. Now, I've went and identified all these cards, and it turns out the only one that doesn't work is this, the Fire Pro V3400. And considering that all of these cards were sold as untested, that's not bad at all. So what all did we get here? Well, this, as you know, is the 710 by EVGA, and it turns out that it has two gigabytes of DDR3 memory. And just as I expected, this turned out to be the 8490. It has one gigabyte of VRAM, and I've already done a video on the card, so you're not going to be seeing any more of this one. And this is the 6450 with one gigabyte of DDR3 VRAM. Uh, I couldn't figure out if it was made by a board partner or by AMD directly, but you'll probably see a video on it at some point. And it turns out this card by Pegatron is actually a GT220 with one gigabyte of DDR3 VRAM. I've yet to work with low-end GeForce 200 series cards, so I want to say I'm looking forward to this, but I've not heard many good things about this card. And this one turned out to be actually a GT635 with two gigabytes of DDR3. DDR3, which is honestly a lot better than I expected from a card of this stature, but we'll see how it performs at a later date. This card, however, was identical to a card I just made a video on, which was the X300 SE with hyper memory. However, that card definitely had some issues. It was not running at its full potential and was dying, so let me know if you want me to remake that video with this card. Next, we got a GT520 with one gigabyte of DDR3 VRAM, and last but not least, this Pegatron card, I'm fairly certain, is a 3450 with a quarter gig of DDR2 for VRAM. Not a very powerful card, and honestly, I've forgotten if I made a video on a 3450 already, but if I haven't, expect to see this one soon. So, all in all, this is what I ended up with. I think I got my money's worth, given the type of content I make on this channel, but let me know what you think in the comments below. So, I hope you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you at some point. Adios.